There we go. There we go. Yeah. Cool. Hey, thanks for the introduction. Um, so I'm going to talk about the story from going from open channel SSDs to zone namespaces. And it's been a long road. So before that, we're going to look at this pretty slide and really enjoy it and continue on to the next one. So open channel SSDs. Hey, so yeah, so those people who kind of been following this for the last couple of years will know that I've been running around screaming this a lot. And it's about, so there's two things to open channel SSDs. There's IO isolation, there's predictable latency, and there's data placement IO scheduling. You kind of have this integration that lets you kind of open this interface up to an SSD and enable these um, new concepts. And the reason it's kind of been interesting here in the industry that we kind of wide gain adoption, one of the reasons was that SSDs are getting bigger, NAND is getting bigger, the capacity of the NAND is getting bigger. In the old days, we had one SSD and it had one application, and that was it. But when you go to these hyperscalers today, they have SSDs that are 2, 4, 8, 16 terabytes. And most of their customers don't have that big of a workload if they're like compute, virtual machines, and so on. They might be smaller. So you have a lot of users, different workloads, and they're all ending up on different parts of the SSD. Um, and that's, so for SSDs, that's the worst thing that can happen. That means you have your garbage collection runs around, your write amplification inside of the drive spikes up, and, and basically you're getting a very bad experience. You're getting the tail fluctuation and so on. So open channel to the rescue. So there's kind of two concepts, two main concepts in open channel. One is on the left side here, we have chunks, where it's basically you have a chunk and in the LBA address space, and you write sequentially within there. When you're done writing, you reset and you go back again. Um, that's one thing, that's the contract between the host and the drive. The other one is the parallel units, where you can kind of do IO isolation, enable that kind of where you say this part of the SSD should be for this particular workload, or this part of the SSD should be this particular workload. So when Open Channel kind of was brought up, um, there wasn't anything like an NVMe specification that kind of enabled that. So, but that kind of came at the same time as Open Channel grew up, it came the same in, we have this IO determinism in NVMe. Uh, so this is MVM sets, endurance groups, as it kind of been talked about the last, last two years, and FMS, and here too as well. Um, so that's kind of being served today, but one thing that's not being served, that's the chunks. You can get where I'm going with this. Um, so what we've seen is that Open Channel has that kind of thinking, not Open Channel in particular, but that kind of thinking it's like hyperscalers, all flat array guys, uh, and large storage systems. They have been considering that kind of architecture because they needed kind of they want to reduce write amp and so on. And all of them kind of agree on these key concepts. So let's go standardize it. A lot of things about Open Channel has been that it's not standardized. Let's put it in a standard. And that's where we are today. So long time after here we are uh, zone namespaces. So it's a technical proposal in the NME work group. We're working on it weekly. And it's approached to have three things. One is reduce write amplification. Another is to reduce overrisening. There's a good quote by uh, Mark Callahan from Facebook where know that excessive overrisening is similar to early replacement. In both cases, you buy more drives, which we want as vendors. That's great. But <laughs> I mean, what about you get them down from here? I mean, but, but that just means they're going to, but if they consolidate, they still have room for more drives. So we're getting, still going to sell drives. That's all good. Uh, so, so it's all going to get it, but they, they want to consolidate, have more and more and more. They're, I mean, the physical space that they have in the data centers, that limited. So put it together. And reduce DRAM and SSDs. So DRAM is the highest cost after uh, NAND itself. But those are the two things. Then there's kind of things that follows that when you do that, and that is that we have we improved the latency outliers, um, and we increased the throughput because we're doing less garbage collection within the SSD. That's really cool. Uh, so this is a tail of scale. There's a 99, 49s, 59s. It has an impact there. We don't even need to do IO isolation. We just need to do this, and we are getting far, far, like, we're getting really long, uh, a long way with that. And the last part, which is really important, and what we're seeing here with OCP, the software and hardware playing together, is the software ecosystem together with the hardware ecosystem. And that together kind of enables this massive adoption, easy adoption, where we can kind of do all these cool things. So, so what is zone namespaces? I mean, so Lee came, came, came in, to, uh, yeah, talked about it, so I'm going to reiterate quickly. 
And you have an, uh, you have an address space, namespace, and then maybe speak. And you have these zones laid out all sequentially uh, after each other. And each of them, you write them sequentially. When you want to write them again, you reset them, you go back again, and you're back. So there's a write pointer, as you see right there. That's kind of how far did I write into that zone. <laughs> and this follows SAC and CBC SMR, as, as Lee put it, very, very similar. And that's where we're gonna, yeah, gonna go. And that's where we're putting in NDME. So for a zone, we have all this metadata. Uh, the zone states, we have like empty. You kind of run, you run around in the state machine. And a zone is empty, it becomes implicitly open when you write to it or explicitly open. Uh, when it's full, it jumps into this state. You reset it, it jumps in and becomes empty again. That works. Uh, so, so that's SMR, kind of that, the thinking we have. There's a little bit of extra things that we, we put on top. And that's the zone capacity. So you have a zone size. And that's a, so in SMR speak, that's what you have to write to. But for SSDs, it can shrink or it can kind of be at, at least be less than the zone size. So there's a zone capacity. And zone capacity, that's the actual area where you can write within the zone. So that's a new thing, a new thing that we added in. And this is one of those things that we need to kind of using SMR semantics on an SSD. And so that's, that's, that's that, that basically what we're putting in. But there is one more thing that we're doing, and that's zone append. So this one is really, really, I mean, so this, this is game changer. It makes me very excited. So basically what we see is that, so when you have SMR drives and you're writing to a zone, if you have multiple writers, you need to serialize it. You need to get, get serialized, do one write, wait it out, wait for the completion, and then you send the next write. Wait it out and come back. And that's great for HDDs, that's, that works fine. But for SSDs where we can do 100 a case of writes per second, that just breaks down. So I'm, I'm, I've showed it here a bit. So you have like uh, the number of K of, uh, the number of K writes, like 100,000 writes, and how many writers? Uh, one, and then I could, like, yeah, how many, how is it? Da, da, da. One zone, one zone, four zones that we're writing across, and then no zones. And then there's one writer, two writers, three writers, four writers. That's how it is. And one writer, everything is good. Two writers, it starts to break down, it doesn't scale, it's, it's a natural lock contention problem. So that, that's just, that doesn't scale at all. So, and to say this is for, this one up here is for Quemo, and this one is bare metal. I mean, we're just leaving tons of throughput on the table. We do not want that. So that's where Sona Pen comes in. So I can give an example here. So first, this is the Sona Radix. So this is the traditional way to do it. You have a write command. You have your pretty write pointer. It's on the side there. You do a 4K write. Boom, write pointer updates. You do an 8K write. Boom, write pointer updates. And you do a 16K and it jumps up. Traditional works. We know how this works. And you're kind of serializing the, the, the host takes care of serializing the IOs. Um, great with ADDs, not so great with SSDs. Zone append. So we do the same here. It's like the idea is that we have zone append. We send down the command to the first LBA of the starting LBA of the zone. Uh, and it creates the right pointer. We do the 8K, but we do it to the same address in the zone. And then the drive, instead of us telling it, you should place your data exactly there. The drive will tell us where it put this data within the zone. Um, and you kind of, all this flows together, and it doesn't matter the order. So we can do the same here with 8K write, and then the write pointer just increases by the 8K, and so on. Um, so what's really unique here is, for those of you who have been building file systems in the host and so on, distributed file systems, normal file systems, databases, what you're seeing here is a drive doing the block allocation for you on a fine-grained level. And that takes up cycles on the CPU. That's the locking that's expensive, that you cannot like, accelerate it. It's really, really annoying to have. And it limits your, like, your throughput of your whole system. With this, you can do the fine-grained block allocator. That's the SSD that does that for you. That's the zone append. And then the coast grain, the zone, kind of where do I want to write in big chunks? That's kind of made, you can do that yeah, less often than you do with the fine grained block allocator. So this is, this is, this is, I mean, yeah, this is, so we are all working on making, enabling this in the Linux kernel applications and so on. Great for both hard drives and SSDs, cool. So one more thing. So, so a lot of you have noticed that, that 
last couple of years, uh, SMR, WD has been doing tons of work on, on enabling this in the, in the software ecosystem. Uh, there's been, yeah, been a lot of people that have been involved in enabling it. Um, and we kind of took the fight. Hey, we need this new interface, get it in. Da, 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 da. And today all this code is kind of like used in production, it's stable, it's all good. And since we're using this, the, the same status machine as SMR, we can take CNS SSDs and plug and play. We don't need to build the software ecosystem. We don't need to get drives, but prototype them and get them out and then build the software system. It is already there. And that is, that is beautiful. So that's kind of, so we have, we have this whole part here, the left side, goes all the way up. We have the integration with SCSI and ATA, the block layer, DM zone, F2FS, there's patches on the mailing list for BartFS. That's all, that's in there today. That works with a zone block device with the SMR drives. Now we're gonna add on CNS. And we'll just go in, patch up the NVMe driver, do a little bit here and there. And we kind of have uh, F2FS running on top on bare metal uh, CNS SSDs. So wh why I'm mentioning that is because normally you have something like DM zone in place that has this, not particularly DM zone, but in normal host side FTLs, they have like one gigabyte of DRAM per one terabyte of media that you kind of have to manage, that's the mapping table, and that's also DRAM saving, you kind of get on the SSD with this kind of technology. And now you don't need to have that because you're integrating directly with a file system. So the metadata is on disk, it's been managed. So this means, so give you in terms like, normally you would need, if you had a 32 terabyte SSD, uh, you would have 32 of gigabyte of DRAM somewhere to kind of manage that mapping table on a 4K uh, LBA granularity. With this, you don't need it, so you don't need 32 gigabyte of DRAM, which is the second most expensive thing after NAND cost. You don't need that anymore. You need maybe a couple of hundred megabytes. And that's also a game changer regarding cost and so on. Cool, so, so how is this vap vaporware? Is it, does it exist? I mean, so I can at least talk about a little bit about the software ecosystem. So this is, what you're seeing here is like CNS support in Linux. So we have all this working internally. When the spec is ratified, we're gonna drop it on the software ecosystem and it's all be gonna, gonna be from day one. This is not a real drive, just for your information, so don't derive anything from this. If I was showing that, you would see me looking for a job tomorrow and Georgie will run up here and kill me. <laughs> so, but, 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 let's, let's see, yeah. So this is all virtual, don't read into it, but it shows that you have an NVMe drive and you kind of say, you have this parameter, the attribute that says it's host managed Yes, it's a, it's a zone block device. And there's this kind of chunk sectors with the zone size, and that's one gigabyte in, uh, yeah, it's 512 bytes. There's two million of them, so it's one gigabyte. You can go in and read, there's these zones that I talked about, the state. There's a starting LBA, there's a write pointer, there's capa uh, the capacity, state, and, and so on. A whole this machine is working, it's stable. You can see this NVMe CLI tool that we extended. This is here today. And as soon as the spec is done, it will we'll release everything. One, the last thing, so I talked about F2FS. So just to give you an, an idea of how that works, so we did the whole plumbing to, to enable that. And you basically take make FS, F2FS on this virtual drive uh, that is a CNS drive, it simulates a CNS drive, and format it with, with a CNS and a F2FS file system, and we mount it, we uh, do a, go into the directory, we list like the files, so there are no files, we go in and create a CNS files, reduce DRAM, over reasoning and firmware complexity, yay, write it, put it in LS again, it's there, and then I add it, I cat it again. And yes, I can unmount it, and I can mount it again, I can reboot the system, and the data will still be there. But I don't think we have time to do that today, but you can hunt me down, and I'll show it to you. Uh, so all this, this is, we're, we're ready. I mean, so this is not five years software. This is like waiting for hardware, wait on the spec, and we can kind of go off and do all this. And I'm, so I'm only talked about the Linux kernel, but I'm sure SPDK, other applications, it'll be available when, when it, this kind of drops on to, yeah, when the spec is ratified. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, we have time for a couple of questions. Steve. <laughs> so, 
So F2FS, what we have to do there, there is two things in F2FS. One is the, the data that are, the segments, they are sequential, so we can do that. There's the other part, the random access part. And so we are teaching F2FS to also be super block and all that that needs to be sequential. We are doing that, so we are, we are making a new on-disk format for that. Uh, yes, yeah, and we are targeting F2FS, ButterFS, and XFS. So we, we, are, we are not going small here. We're taking everything. <laughs> ASD4 is gonna, gonna wait a bit. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome, guys. Thanks a lot. Yeah.